Hey, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to share my three part secret email framework that I use to write my daily emails. And this is the exact framework that I've used for the last two and a half years to write these short 200 to 500 word emails that bring in 1k plus in sales every day. So watch this video until the end. You're going to see exactly what that framework is. And also, if you watch until the end, I'm going to share how to get my newest ebook, the Email Rainmaker Playbook, for free. Now, if you are new here, my name is Sean, and on this channel, I talk about how to create internet income from writing online. So if you want more content around that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And with all that said, let's hop into my computer. I'm going to share this three-part framework with you right now. Okay, so I actually wrote this first as a Twitter thread, and it broke down the three-part framework. So what I'm going to do is, I know not everyone follows me on Twitter, so I'm going to go over this thread with you and then also show you the actual email so I can show you an example of what this framework looks like. Now, if you want to follow me on Twitter, because I write one of these threads typically every week, go to twitter.com and then follow me at Sean Anthony Says. And then you can see all these threads that I write in real time. So this framework, it's a three-part framework that I use to write my daily emails that pull in 1K plus in sales every day per an email. And it stands for VBO. And this is an acronym, so I'm going to show or share with you exactly what this V, B, and O stands for. So let's start with the V. The V is value. And value is defined as an insight, wisdom, or lesson that gets the reader to think or behave differently. And the important thing here is not length, right? We're not tr just trying to go for more words in a longer email. What we're trying to do is create these aha moments for the reader. And that could be short, that could be long, but that's the main thing we're trying to do is create this aha moment where someone reads it and they're thinking about something differently and it's maybe getting them to even behave a little differently. And I'll show you an example in a second. So I have a lot of freelancers on my email list and a lot of freelancers are used to getting paid on an hourly basis or they're used to getting paid like 50, 100, $200 per an email if they're an email copywriter. And so my value example in the email I'm gonna show you is I talked about how I wrote an email and got paid four figures per email instead of just $100. And so the lesson or the V here, the value was about how getting paid big money is about picking the right clients more than your skill. And then I also shared the three criteria that I look for. So the value here is a lesson and I'm getting someone to think differently about the way that they're getting paid as a freelancer or the amount that they're getting paid if they're writing emails, right? So if a freelancer reads this email, and thinks, well, I didn't know that I could just get paid more just by picking better clients. I thought it was all dependent on skill. And yes, skill is important, but picking the right clients and the right businesses to work with has a huge impact on how much you're getting paid. So that is a mindset shift. That's a difference in thinking when someone reads that. That is an example of V, of value. So now the second part in this framework is the B. And the B stands for bridge. And the bridge is a story, analogy, analysis, example, or metaphor that makes the V easy to understand. So what we're trying to do here is use something that's common knowledge or common sense, and we're making the V or the value, the insight, wisdom, or lesson easy to understand by comparing it to something like a bridge, right? A story, analogy, analysis, example, or metaphor. My mentor, Travis Sago, he calls this kitchen table logic because the way that he thinks about it is you're sitting at a kitchen table with friends or family, and you're trying to explain something to them. How would you explain it? So kitchen table logic, I love that explanation. And the bridge, the main goal of the bridge is to make the V easy to understand. So it's very easy for us to just share a lesson or a piece of wisdom or an insight, but we wanna make sure that it's understood because that's what gets the reader to think and behave differently. So the bridge helps to do that. And we use again, one of these things here. So an example, my V in the above example was about making four figures per email instead of $100 by picking the right client. And so my B in this example was a personal story of the, of a recent client that I was working with and they sell a $3,000 offer and my cut is 30%. And so I broke down the math. I wrote a 350 word email that made four sales, which means 30% of 3k is $900 times four sales. That's 3.6k in commissions, $3,600. So by sharing this story about a client and breaking down the math and making it very easy to understand, right? Most people know simple math. The V is now easy to understand because someone can read this and be like, oh, that's how he's getting paid four figures. He's picking better clients who are selling these higher ticket offers and he's structuring these revenue sharing deals. So now someone can see the bridge. In this case, I used a personal story and an example and I shared that with the reader and now they can understand exactly how they can make four figures from writing emails for a client or per an email versus just $100. 
Okay, so that's the B, very important piece of this. They're, they're all important, but the B makes it easy to understand, makes the V easy to understand. Now the O, the O stands for one thing. And this is, you can consider this the call to action, right? One action the person should take after reading the email. So that could be to read a sales page, click to an order form, consume a piece of content like reading a blog article or watching a video. But I have one rule with the O, and that is it must lead the reader down the path to buying. So what I mean by that is if you're leading them to a piece of content, that content has to have some kind of link where somebody can buy something or purchase something, some kind of offer. And so the O, I'm not just trying to send people to random pieces of content, I'm trying to send them to areas where it brings them closer and closer down the, the path to buying. So that's the main thing, my main rule with the O. And then also when you're mentioning the one thing, it should be positioned to talk about what the person wants and not just your product, right? Not just buy my stuff. So in my O, in my example, I didn't just say click here to buy my course or click here to buy my program. I positioned it around something that the reader wants, right? So if you read this, if, you, if you'd like to break past the $100 per email rate and start getting paid four figures or more per, for assets you create, not the time and effort you put in, click here to check out the details of how I can help. And then I link to the sales page. But you can see here, this is not, hey, click here to buy my stuff. It's if you wanna start breaking past the $100 per an email rate and make these four figures per uh, an email, then, then check this out. So it's positioned around something that the reader wants and not just buy my stuff, okay? So that is the VBO framework. Very simple. I'm always thinking about this as I'm writing my email. What's the value here? What's the bridge and what's the one thing? And if you start using this framework for your emails, and even for your, just your content in general, you're gonna write much better emails and much better content that actually gets people to purchase and actually become a customer with you. So now with that said, I wanna jump over to my Facebook group here because I often repost my emails here. And this is the actual email that I was talking about. So this is the subject line, wanna get paid more than $100 per an email. And I'll just read through this with you. So it says, this will sound braggadocious, but when working with clients, even as a beginner, I've never made less than $300 per an email. Not because I'm insanely talented or the best email copywriter in the world, but because I know how to pick the right clients to work with, okay? And how to structure these deals in a way that can be paid for the assets I create, not the amount of time or effort I put in. So now we're, we're getting into the V, right? Getting paid four figures instead of just $100. These days, it's not unusual for me to make four to five figures for a single email. For example, okay, now we're getting into the B, the bridge. Last week, I made $3,600 writing one 350 word email for a client. They sell a 3K course and I get paid 30% of the gross sales I bring in, which is $900 per sale. The email I wrote, wrote got them four new sales, making me $3,600 in commissions. And now I have an asset I can reuse for this client or other clients and or myself. I own this asset and I can use the same email to pull up bigger paychecks whenever I see fit. Did it take me hours to write? No, it was ready to go in 30 minutes. Was there anything special about this email? No, it was a normal 350 worder that touched on a pain point of their market. Was it a one hit wonder? No, I've written quite a few of these rainmakers over the years. So then what made this email work and how did I make four figures and counting from it on 30 minutes of work? It comes down to picking the right client to work with, right? So now we're in the bridge still and we're, we're bridging the actual story to the value. If a client has a proven offer, and these are the three criteria that I talk about, a proven offer that's already selling, consistent traffic and new leads joining their list every day, client results, testimonials, case studies, and social proof. I'm pretty confident I can do a kick-ass job for them and I can write these simple 350 word emails and get paid big bucks for it. On the other hand, if I were to work with struggling Sally, who can barely keep the lights on, that same exact email wouldn't make me a dime. So while your skill is important, it's not as important as picking the right partner to dance with. This might all seem like common sense, but the amount of talented freelancers and copywriters who barely scrape, scrape by tells me otherwise. And this is the one of the main things I'll be helping folks with in my email side hustle program. I'll also be sharing the exact email that got me this recent commission check. Now, I'm not promising that if you work with me, you'll get paid $3,600 per email at the gate, but I've been doing this stuff for a while now. I have a sixth sense when it comes to this stuff. And what I can do is show you how to find these businesses who are happy to pay you a pretty penny if you can deliver more sales, what to say to them to get them dying to work with you, and how to write killer emails that fatten both of your wallets. So if you'd like to break past the $100 per email rate, getting into the one thing, and start getting paid on an ongoing basis for assets you create, not the time or effort you put in. We'll be jamming a lot more about this in my email side hustle group. Check out the deeds in the comments below and the next class starts in 4.4, but you can get a head start as soon as you hop in and my sign off here. So from here, I dropped the link to the sales page in the comments 
and this is a link to my email side hustle program. So this is the example email that I was talking about in the thread. And you can see here, it's using that exact framework. We talked about the V getting paid a higher amount per every client, right? Four figures or more instead of hundred dollars per an email depends on picking the right clients and structuring the right deals. So the V is up here. The B is over here. We're going into a story. Then I kind of go back to the V and I, I explain the lesson again, right? Here's the, the three criteria. And then at the end here, we have the, the O, the one thing. And then I link to it in the comments on social media because it helps with reach. So that's an example of my VBO framework. I hope you found that valuable. And also I promised you a gift if you stuck around to the end. If you go to emailrainmaker.com and you join my free Facebook group called Email Marketing Rainmakers, you are going to be notified as soon as my next ebook, the Email Rainmaker Playbook is live. And it should be live in the next one to two weeks from watching this video. And so if you want a free copy of this ebook, I'm probably gonna charge for it at some point. Make sure you go to emailrainmaker.com, join the group, and you're gonna see the notification as soon as it's live. You'll also be on my email list if you enter your email address when you join the group, and you can see more of my daily emails using this VBO framework for yourself. So you can study them, learn from them, and start writing your own emails too. So I hope that was valuable. This is a framework that I've used for years and it has made me a lot of money from writing daily emails, both for myself and for clients. If you enjoyed this and got value out of it, give it a like, and also let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.